Okay. I'm Yo Hong Eng, a retired teacher. I was born in 1946 in Pan America, Chile. All right. In my talk, I will concentrate on the constituencies that I've been very familiar with. They are Bodo, Changi, and Tampanese. Uh, I know this area well because my relatives stayed here in all these areas. In my talk, I would highlight what I had gone through physically in real life experiences, so as to speak. What I saw and experienced during my tour of adventures, either walked, cycled, on bicycles or motorcycles, as well as drove when I owned a car. I would not be politically, religiously, and ethnically biased. These are my personal views. Uh, should any here, anyone here feels offended, please excuse me. All right? Now, background to land ownership. All right. Um, so when the British took over Singapore, the British could sell land to anyone who wanted to buy. So in the eastern part of Singapore, there were many land buyers, uh, such as the Trapatite conglomerate, all right, the rich men like Go Wing Long, Tan Lak Sai, Ko Stick Lim, all right, Frankel, Senet, Utamram, all right, Sumapa, Ausagov, Alginet, etc. They bought up this land. But then when they bought up this land, they were empty. There were very few people staying here except some of the Orang Lawud staying along river banks. All right. So they had to encourage people to stay in their land, to look after their land. But very few stakers. They build houses for them. Right. They, do not, um, they did not collect any fees. So eventually, slowly, they encourage uh, people to stay there. But then these new settlers find it very difficult to settle down because of the lack of water. There is no portable water, okay? And also presence of wild animal, grass, um, grassland, jungle, etc. So slowly, they have to improve themselves, all right? They invite more people in, call in their relatives, and so the population becomes bigger and bigger. All right. And what did they do? They, at first, they, for food, they um, had farms. They cordoned up the whole the area that they are to live in. And then they red chicken, red pigs, and red dogs. All right. These chickens are left to run freely. The pigs as well. All right. Why? Because these chicken, pigs, etc., they would just go around and source the area for food. All right, so uh, the grass and the, the worms and the pests are all eaten up by the, uh, the chickens and uh, pigs. All right, and uh, so and as, at the same time, these uh, animals that rear become sources for food for them. All right, they also planted vegetables, fruit trees, and so the land developed. All right, and the uh, land owners also planted uh, standard crops like uh, yeah. rambutans and uh, coconut trees, rubber trees, right? So as to harvest them uh, for exp for export, all right? These are the standard crops they, that the owner, land owner um, planted. But these crops also provided jobs, uh, laborers, the old land owner, but will make use of these settlers, all right, to work for them. All right, and to look after their land, all right, and eventually more and more people came because of the trouble in China, because of the trouble in Indonesia by the Dutch, and also in uh, India, all right, they came over, all right, and more people, uh, when there's more people set up markets, uh, roads were built. The first few roads that were built by the British were the Changi Road, Bedok Road. Um, Paya Liba, Tampanis Road, all right, and then with the roads, uh, more people wish to come. And from the main road, they had side roads, which is actually uh, earth road, all right, muddy roads. They, 
And then these roads are when it rains, it become very muddy and all right, soggy and with potholes. All right. At first, these side roads have got no names. They and then the names are actually by numbers. Got track one, two, three, or four. There is no common names. Just only track. All right. For example, a person who lives in um, who want to post letter to Changi uh, track forty five, or they will say okay. Uh, to so and so, Changi track 45. Then the postman will find it, go and track these roads down. But eventually, when, later on, when the government, PAP government took over, all right, then the roads were paved and then the uh, names were then given uh, to these um, roads. The tracks were removed. And I mean, the, the name of the track, I uh, are removed and then give it a name right so eventually the kampongs are uh, paved and then at the same time also there is the electric uh, e electrification program uh, uh, began that is to electrify the the kampongs electric poles of uh, built I mean uh, were constructed and then electricity supplied to the kampong there was also pipe water Pipe water is also uh, supplied to the kampongs, right? And stem pipes, uh, there is one common place where, you know, along the roads, there are stem pipes for people to use freely, free water, right? But it, eventually, these stem pipes have to remove because the people abuse it, right? They turn on the water and then they don't switch off or bathing or washing continuously without turning off the water which is a waste but slowly these stem pipes eventually were removed all right um okay um so these were the things about the uh, land ownership right I forgot. do you see the slides here can you see the slides oh sorry uh oh uh, yeah Alright, so these are some of the slides that is told. This is about the, uh, a slide in uh, a kampong. Alright, with a small little stretch of path going down. Can you see the slide? Can? On the screen, the slide. The, the. Can you see? Uh, how about this one? Right, can? Good, okay. So this one now, uh, then these people they go around hunting, hunting for wild pigs, hunting for wild birds and so on. So this one is in the early days, uh, my father-in-law and now nobody passed away already. He, he was able to own guns and then he carried guns and bullets and then he went around hunting. All right, for wild boars, hunting for birds and so on. All right. And uh, after hunting, then time for cooking. All right. So this is uh, the, the, the type of landscape. Uh, this is another one landscape of those days, right? Full of trees. Uh, okay, then this is the landscape of old Kampong Chai Chi in the 1930s where the houses were made at tap. Uh, this is a marketplace. Mm. Okay, and uh, this. Uh, I see. So, this is about land development in Singapore. And uh, during the Japanese time, this I was born in 1946, but I did not actually um, be ruled by the Japanese. But I've seen the remnants of those places that the Japanese left. All right, there were these uh, cemeteries. Um, the, the places where the Japanese buried the dead of during the Suk Ching time. Uh, thousands of Chinese were gunned down in Badok and um, in Changi and then the, they were put into mass graves. All right. And uh, there were this in the sixties the government uh, the uh, Chinese Chamber of Commerce to sponsor the, the the digging up of these remains of the victims of Japanese and then put them down uh, at the civilian war memorial I uh, put them and can case them at the bottom of the war memorials here 
right at the uh, Bras Basa Road. Is it Bras Basa Road? Um, at the other end today, today is uh, um, the the road is called um, yeah, in front of Suntec City. Raffles City. Ah, uh, uh, or the War Memorials. That the victims, the the under remains were encased inside here in urns. Their urns were put inside under these memorials, right? And then uh, this one, I think we can read more about it. And uh, this picture shows also during the Japanese time, this uh, the land owners would pay the Japanese a uh, rent. Sionan Kobitsutsu Si. All right. Uh, these uh, some of these people they still kept the Japanese uh, receipt. And uh, also during that time, uh, the Japanese they got this ran this tram car. There, there this one is a uh, Japanese tram car with the Japanese uh, tram car ticket tickets, right? Twenty cent, fifteen cent, ten cent, five cent, three cent tickets, tram car tickets. And then this is a picture of uh, my birth certificate in 1946. They still use the Japanese birth certificate, right? So. And then, uh, yes, and before the Japanese came, the British built a lot of these pillboxes, right, to defend the southern part of Singapore, along the east coast of Singapore from uh, Changi right until uh, Pola Belakang Mati. There were lots of these pillboxes, and uh, this is me standing on top of one of the pillboxes. Today, most, in fact, Almost all these bill boxes were gone already, except one or two I think left behind in maybe Pulau Sentosa you can see one or two there. Right? Ah, uh, okay. And also at that time when I was teaching Tan Yung Ru in front of Tan Yung Ru school there is a watchtower. I some people say it's water tank, but I don't think it's water tank because up there uh, there are holes, you know, watching. So I think it's a watchtower. But today this watch watchtower is gone already. Uh, all right so just now i told you about the roads are uh, now these roads are changi road bedo road tampines road i think uh i've uh, got not go through this is this is a picture of east coast road taken by the Straits times all right um, taken by the Straits times uh this east coast road that before land reclamation this is um part of the pan america chill where the first land reclamation was uh, taken place and then the earth was taken down uh, to reclaim the sea from there. There was a start of the land reclamation in East Coast in 1960s. Okay. Um, yeah, just on, and also along the roads, there were these buses running uh, as a service to the people. For example, this Changi bus. Changi bus ran from uh, Changi Point until uh, the in town. Uh, that place called Capital Theater. Cinema. Uh, what cinema? Capital uh, Theater. Um, yes, Changi bus, and then this is an example of the bus stop. Uh, the, and the bus stop was very bare, just only a cover. Of course, before that, it was just only a. Uh, uh, bus stand without any shelter but this one is already very good with the shelter but before that if there was only a, a stand only no no stools but today is very comfortable today you have a board telling you what numbers and all that have to different right ah. okay and then um, this is Changi bus uh, yes and uh, this is the Paya Lebar bus on the right hand side is a Paya Lebar bus and uh, on the left hand side the Katong Budok bus. Uh, I concentrate on these few buses only because they ply along the places where I am now talking about Kat Changi, Budok, Tampines. But of course during those days there were 10 bus company operating as well as one STC bus. But if you want to talk about bus transport in general maybe one day I'll talk about the whole of Singapore bus transport. The buses, all the buses in Singapore but here I'm talking only about Changi, Bodo and Tampines. All right, these three buses flying along the route that I'm talking about: Changi, Bodo bus, uh, Katong Bodo bus, Changi bus, as well as Paya Lebar bus. Okay, and 
Ah, uh, uh, this is an example of bus tickets, Paya Lebar bus tickets. Alright, I and also this is an example of a Changi bus tickets, but I cannot find Bedok bus ticket. It is I I I just cannot find. No one could ever supply me a bus tickets, but I can find one in Amazon which trying to sell for thirty dollars per piece. Alright. All right, and then let's go on to the next one. Um, all right, the bus service, of course, these 10 bus companies later on, uh, they were amalgamated or uh, into uh, four. All right, Singapore bus service, I think we all know about it. Uh, Singapore bus services, amalgamated bus, associated bus, and trans island bus. And the Singapore traction bus or, or STC, it was dissolved after all the buses were merged into four. SDC, SDC was no more. Okay. Um, so this is about transport in Singapore. And uh, next, am I going too fast? No, no, no. Okay, am I? Uh, it's, it's okay. Is that okay, huh? Uh. Uh. All right. Uh, next, uh, I want to go on to uh, the politics in this area. Now, this without the political scene this area will not be very uh, exciting all right you know that uh, this area in the 50s and 60s you know of course people action party came in together with the different different group of people such um, as those um, uh, Pernakan, the chinese from uh, China and also uh, they because of the events in China also they, they believe in different ideology they all together form the P People's Action Party all right and the uh, 1959 they came together and then the PAP came into power okay but slowly all right but slowly um, The, the the people's action party shows there was some uh, split inside and then in 1963 uh, then there was a split uh, 19, in fact 62 already showing a split already so the, the 13 members who were quite opposed to Lee Kuan Yew uh, they were sacked from the PAP and they formed into Barishan Socialists why is it I brought in, in this topic in is because of the Tampines area. Uh, there were lots of these supporters, uh, the Barishan Socialist supporters. All right. Uh. All right. Um, yeah, then in the, the PAP or this uh, Lee Kuan Yew will brand them as communists and, and then uh, wanted to ban them from Singapore. All right, let me tell you whether it's true or not. Okay, in um, the Tampines area especially, uh, there were these nightly uh, sales meeting going on in the Wayang stage. All right, there were meetings and meetings and meetings. And, and at the end of the meeting, they would shout, uh, Mao Zedong Wan Sui or Long Live Mao Zedong. Okay, in the daytime, these members, uh, they put in white uniform. They went around the villages, uh, distributing pamphlets, selling the Barishan Socialist newsletter, right? And um, also, they formed kindergarten uh, classes in the... Uh, uh, Wayang stage, all right, uh, getting the children to go to their kindergarten, all right, and yeah, so that's why this Lee Kuan Yew they thought that they were communists uh, dominated, but I don't know this one is up to you because uh, living in, I'm telling you exactly what I experienced, I saw, okay. And also there will be people going around from houses to houses to call to be a member, member of the country 
people's association all right so once you pay a small little fee and be a member they will just nail a, a little placard onto your door and say you are a member of the country people's association all right they ran from house to house to, be, to recruit members all right of course later on um pap got them and then banned them all all right the those conductors bus conductors bus drivers they're all members of the opposition uh, you trade unions kosatu right uh the kuan yu banned them all and, so, and then now it's left with ntuc national trade union congress right so this is exactly what happened in tampines as well as changi area right other places of course i'm sure do they do the same thing right but during in this area last there was a leader Barishan Shushi's leader called Lin Chin Xiong. He was a very, very uh, fluent speaker. Uh, of course, he speak Hokkien, he spoke Hokkien, he also Mandarin, but then he spoke Hokkien better. So during his uh, rallies, wow, he could really sway the crowd. His Hokkien was really peppered, uh, peppered with um, nuances, peppered with jokes and all that. People were all years listening to him. He could sway the crowd around. All right, as co compared to Lee Kuan Yew, of course, Lee Kuan Yew used English. English is very powerful. Lah. But then Lin Jin Xiong used Hokkien. All right, that was a uh, um, show winner. All right, he was really good. But then Lee Kuan Yew said he was a communist. But then he himself said, no, he was not a communist. That we don't know. We leave it to uh, people to judge. Okay? Mm. So that is about. Then in 1963 election, ah, the Barishan Socialist came to power, right? Ah, uh, so it's not came to power. He, the from Tampines constituency, he came in as a um, MP, right? Mm. His name was uh, Po Berliak. But unfortunately, two months later, uh, two, mm, two, two years later, they boycotted the parliament and the 13 members walked out of the parliament. Then, then after that, uh, the Barishan socialists slowly, slowly died off, all right, and and also due they died off also due to the operation by the the government, uh, all right, uh, crack down. The lots of dogs of them were the leaders were put in prison. Uh, also, the party was weakened, and slowly they they died away, and uh, Barishan socialists were no more, all right. Uh, that is about politics of uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese, uh, Changi area. So okay, so these are the politics of this area. And uh, let's go on to next. Uh, when the British were Singapore, they had this uh, Royal Air Force. The Air Force was at Changi Airport, right? Changi, Changi. The the when they were in uh, Changi the people of Changi benefited a lot from this uh, airport with their support with the soldiers and whatever renting or in this area or with the support their, their family they brought their families all over to from England all right to stay in a, around in and around Changi airport and the people around this area really benefited a lot from them why as an armor, all right. So the they were clever. They know that the Chinese armor were very good at handling children, educating, uh, handling children. So they were employed as armor. They were as employed as domestic helper, all right. As serv house a uh, servant, all right. In the house, they need uh, people to look after as gardeners, all right. They need the servicemen about uh, electricity service or farmers all right and these people in Changi could provide all right laundry all right, washing of and so on all right grocery supplies all right they need uh, fruits they need the butter and cheese they need whatever all right pork and pork and uh, as well as uh, beef and mutton all right these people could supply them all right uh, so they, they really give a lot of benefits to the people of Changi and Tampines. 
And another thing is swill collection. Whatever is was left over, they or the servants would hang them at the gate. And these are called swills. These left over, the farmers would go and uh, collect these swills and then fed them to the pigs and chickens. Uh, so later on, these swills, uh, collection of swills become a very big business. And so, I, mean, I think some in the newspapers just reported yeah. that even they formed the gangs uh, and then to demarket certain boundary areas, certain people can collect this area and so on, you know, uh, this swill thing. Mm. Okay. All right, of course, uh, those people who give, I mean, the, the swills, uh, or give these people to, to, to collect them, Chinese New Year, uh, these swill collectors will give them either chicken or eggs or give them some presents, all right, for the Chinese New Year or the New Year or, or the yeah, Christmas time, they will give them some presents in form of live chicken uh, or eggs. Mm. Ah, this is about the uh, benefits. And some other benefits are also the bars around Sumapa Road, nah, Changi Nai Milestone and in town. Uh, during the weekends, they will go around dancing, drinking, all right, they also, these, uh, uh, around these, these people also benefited a lot from the British Swiss uh, soldiers or airmen. Mm. Um, okay, well, well, before that, then beside that also the, but the buses, the taxis, and so on, they, they ride on taxis, they, they gain also a lot from these uh, uh, soldiers. Alright, then the next, let's go on to another topic. Well, let me see what's the next topic here. Mm. Sand mining. Ah, during my time in Tampanese, there were lots and lots of sand mines. Why? Because at that time after the war, there was a seriously need of sand and other material for reconstruction. So sand was mining great quantity in Tampanese many many companies there and then their min mining methods was something like the Ipo tin mine methods by the Palong methods all right where water was pumped into the side of the hills and then the mixture of sand and silt would then flow down the Palongs and this at the bottom the Palong there were these uh, wooden series boxes and this the the sand will collect on the sluice boxes and the the lorries will come under the sluice box open the sluice box the sand will be loaded onto the lorries all right automatically and will, the boom the lorries will move away all right so all along in uh Tampani, they were using these methods called palong and then when the water was pumped the the, the sand was settled down onto the Swiss boxes and the silty water flowed down to a big huge pond especially for this silt um, for the, the, it was specially built to contain the silt from the hillside from the hills and so in time in eventually the pond will be filled with silt and this silt will be very slippery very uh, gluey all right and later on um, after certain time weeds will grow on this silty uh, water all right and become big piece of nice flat area people flat on it how come this 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 area is so flat and so nice but actually these are silk ponds and if one want to ward, wander into it it is the end of its life you know because 
once you sink into the soup, it's hard to float because above it are all the weeds. You can find it very difficult to, to surface because of the weeds would chuck him down. And then eventually when he died, nobody knows where he is until the smell comes. So there were pigs and what any other animals wander into it and died there. This is a silt uh, quarry pond, uh, sand quarry pond, very silty. And later on, when the government took over Tampanese, they wanted to uh, reclaim the land in Tampanese, the silt gave them a very big headache. Later on, I tell you why. Okay. Um, I will talk, then I'll talk about silt mining again. All right, this silt mining was so intense, so uh, that the sand was in great demand. The HDB also came to play a very, very big part in mining the sand. All right, they 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 built big the 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 hills of this area until so deep is five meters below sea level. Uh, it's a huge place. Uh, today is the Budo Reservoir. Uh, formerly it was a huge um, sand mining quarry. I uh, see the sand was taken from here to build HDB flats and also the extra sand was put in the sand bank behind the reservoir. Today this sand bank is still there. It's a huge place. All right, of course, today um, more and more sand are also imported from Johor. They are being stored there also. So it's a national sand bank of Singapore. All right. At that time, we'll, I was living there in the afternoon. I would go around with cameras. I shot the, the, the sand mining area here. This is the bottom of the Bedok Reservoir. All right. And then this is uh, the, the distance. Uh, there are these ponds. Huh? Mm. See? Uh, this is the bottom mm. of the Bedok Reservoir. And then this road here is actually the PIE. At that time when I was living there, it was the beginning. They're building the PIE. So you see, it was the raw PIE here. At that time, when they built the roads or any building, there was no um, barricades. You know, Today, every where when there's a new building or oh, they wanted to build any <coughs> new building there are barricades uh, to prevent uh, people or animals wander into the construction site but in those days no barricades at all anybody can wander around inside all right so this is uh, uh bottom of the Bodo reservoir and this is a more picture of it oh no this is the uh, pie uh, the building PIE and then the color the reddish photographs here is uh, the Bordeaux industrial estate in the beginning right uh -huh. and then today if you drive along uh, Tampines Avenue 10 on the left hand side you can see only um, greeneries and uh, trees and behind that it was the sand quarry pond if you wander behind this row of trees and grasses ah uh, you can see a big huge pond down there perhaps those living in that area if you go to a to the highest floor you can see a big pond but uh, and also if you use a gps you're driving along the area you can see a big blue area and there is the Tampani sand quarry pond all right and i ventured into it wow really the place was very quiet very placid very calm with, with little wind with the breeze and you can take beautiful photographs mirror light photos from here you can see eh? you can hardly differentiate which one is uh, reflection of this one is real trees ah, so I, I I went there to take these photographs of course you can see many more um, in my collection but I just can only put a few here ah. 
Ah, see, it's this one, ah. Mm. All right. So these are the sand from the sand quarry pond that I. The sand quarry, the pictures of sand quarry pond which I took. Okay. Um. This is Bodok Jetty. Ah, uh, this one is Bodok Jetty. Later I talk. I will talk about Bodok Jetty. Okay. Hmm. Um, well, this is about Kampung Chai Chi, the Chai Market, I think I'll talk about it later. This is about the Kampung Houses uh, in the market. Uh, uh, land acquisition, yes. So, um, the government in 1970s, in the late 60s already, uh, the, the Land Acquisition Act was in progress. Right. The one, the government need to take land from the people to build industrial estates to industrialize right to, in, to industrialize the government need money the government need land the government needs a uh, people right so land with the land acquisition acquisition act the government will move in to take any piece of land that was left behind or undeveloped land uh, this they consider people living in that area in at the houses and zinc houses these are temporary squatters they are not permanent buildings so they just took over one house pay a few hundred dollars and then ask them to move out to the hdb flats and then those with farms the government will compensate them with a piece of farmland to farm in all right so my, my parents are farmers, they, they, they gave a piece of land far away in uh, somewhere in uh, Jurong and then we find it quite unsuitable for farming because in the top of the hill. So of course we, they gave us a free flat in exchange for the farm that the government took. Okay, so after the land was acquired, but usually acquired quite cheaply, like compensation for the, from the government uh, to build industrial estate and so on, it cannot be a standard price. All right, mm. all right. So then was acquired, and before the government asks the people to move out, they have to measure, right? What are the concreted area? The area with concrete, you know, how many square meters of concrete? How many um, papaya plants you have? how many pigs pens you have how many chickens are affected and so on the government will compensate them right hmm. okay so after the compensation um then they move out and the bulldozer came in and the the land was taken over and uh, bulldozer uh, i mean uh, the excavator will came in you know changi buddha temple they are all very hilly area. It's not flat like it is today. It's hilly. It's because of the uh, excavation going on, you know, the flattening of the hills, the the earth and all that is taken to dump into the sea. Right. Uh, that is why it's so flat. The first phase of land reclamation takes place in 1960s. Right. It started at Tanah Merah and the soil was taken from the Budo Hill and then transported by lorries to the sea coast. Uh, that was the first phase. Then later on, more and more um, land was taken, and they used uh, the these excavators with um, the the belts transporting belts from the hill the earth are transported by belts rolling belts to the sea and dump into the sea okay mm. so these are some uh, the pictures here about the belts and then here oh. wait uh, uh, this one yeah okay so at first you know the Tampanese area all very hilly and so on and then land taken over bulldozer came in and an uh, excavator came in, took away the soil, and they become flatlands. All right, and of course, during that time when uh, we, before the 
land exclamation land reclamation we could see, go to the seaside to swim to catch fish and as well as to do many many things ah. but as camping as well but when the bulldozer came in well all these are memories of the past already right now so this is me and my uh, friend and then this is dr ho right dr ho's photographs two photographs just gave me and then he, they were camping at the changi uh, beach yeah uh, uh, can i say uh, something <laughs> can you see yeah pictures yeah yeah dr. Two color photographs <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. Hong was very surprised. He said the colors were well preserved. Uh -huh. I said, no, they're all black and white. These are colorized photos. Yeah, very nice this, color. <laughs> uh, in, fact, in fact, nowadays you can, it's available in the internet. You have to pay a uh, fee. Yeah. And it, you all the photographs, you can colorize them. And the color turned out to be very good. <laughs> when they colorize Changi bus, I don't know what the, whether you produce a red color or not. Uh, uh -huh. Anyway, uh, these two photographs, uh, uh, the lower the lower photograph on the left hand side, I was in the middle. Uh, a, the other uh, two are my cousins. Uh -huh. And then uh, you see, yeah, uh, th this is actually in Panamera. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Panamera now today is the Changi Airport. Uh. Yes. And it was uh, Panamera, there's a long road. It goes in, then the, there is a long road. Yeah, long, long road. Yeah. Drive. Nickel it's drive. Wing Lung. Uh, uh, no. what is it? Yeah, Wing Lung Road. Wing, Wing Lung, Lung is, uh, is, 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 uh, is, 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 So uh, it's a different place. Oh, Aigumuru. Yeah. Uh, Wing Lung, Wing Lung is uh, Aigumuru. So yeah. you see those, uh, this, uh, we don't know what sort of, uh, uh, what sort of, uh, who, uh, we don't know whose land it is. Uh. Ah, David Marshall. And we just uh, during the school holidays, we go and camp there, eh? and uh, there are there are sort of uh, trees and shrubs. We are able to make tables and chairs. Yes. And then yes. Uh, just then just a short while, uh, a short distance is the beach. Uh. So these mm -hmm. are my cousins. Uh. Uh, yeah. I was ca I I'm carrying a dagger. See if you see uh, the one squatting down there, uh, carrying mm -hmm. a dagger. That's me, uh. Uh -huh. So uh, it, it, this is during school holidays. We come from Geylang. We stay in Geylang, and to go there it takes take us a long time. We have to uh, rent a, lo a lorry. Then a lorry will take up there. We'll camp there for about five days to a week. Then then we go back. So yeah. it, it's uh, the, the this kind of uh, background you cannot get in Singapore anymore. Cannot. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's lost already. Uh. Mm -hmm. Of course, All nowadays uh, you go to uh the, some of, of the east coast are uh, further up towards changi mm. you can see a lot of greenery but then there's it's all very cultured during the, the time when we were there they are all nature it, no i don't know we don't know whose land they were, they were it, we assume they were just uh you know it's state land government land yeah so we just uh we just get a lorry bring all our tents and all our equipments we go and mm. camp out there those were the days uh yeah, and, those are the days. Yeah. yeah, so I I, I advise, I yeah. encourage uh, uh, Honging to uh, get this uh, uh, this uh, co co colorized uh, uh, colorized uh, app uh, uh, yeah. to color all your photos. Hmm. It's, it's very good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah, this uh, you see before land commission what that passeries there was this passeries hotel. And this hotel was we are acquired by a very rich man and don't must remember his name. But then is for those rich people with people with money to go and spend down there. Uh, David Marshall and uh, J. Ratnam with a lot of money celebrate weekends and birthdays and wedding ceremonies all inside this Passeris Hotel. And sometimes the RAF uh, booked the whole hotel uh, for their functions. Uh, because for commoners, very hard to get in. I mean, those who were no money, uh, the, the guard would shoo you away. <laughs> uh, they passed the hotel, but later on, when the government took over, the whole thing was become uh, in ruin, and, and uh, now it's no more. All right. Is this and, photograph uh, taken by you? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. This one is taken uh, some from some internet, not me. All right. 
and this one on the right hand side is uh, you know in Tampen, um, Pasir Ris at that time there was this fishing pond right uh, people went there to fish today it's still there it's a uh, part of the Pasir Ris uh, park uh, where people can go there and fish uh, those days was really one one of the very few entertainment uh, area where people on weekends go there enjoy themselves fishing and so on all right this Pasir Ris and then, then the seaside the beach was really in, very inviting with the cool calm water and people went there to swim to camp Pasir Ris is it today yeah. today it looks like this eh? ah today today is uh, what is and there was what year is this ah uh, this one I, before land reclamation might be 60s uh. oh no more really no more uh, but the, the spawn is still there part of the Pasir Ris uh, town uh, area Pasir Ris uh, park part of oh. the Pasir Ris park Right, beautiful. Ah, uh, then next, let's uh, switch on to uh, the airports. Yeah, be, why do I talk about airports? Because it is also in the east, right? Um, yeah. All right. Um, the first airport was at the Farrer Park, not actually airport. Air strips, planes land at the air strip is not an airport. Then. After that, the Kalang Airport was constructed. Uh, um, passengers could take that land and take off from there. And this is, I think, one uh, of my uh, relatives taking the aero, uh, in front of the aeroplanes in Kalang Airport. Right. Then after that, in 1954, I think, uh, there was an air crash because the runway was too short. And the pilot just crashed the plane, and uh, so many people died. Now. So, investigation revealed that the airport had very short runways. So they had to to, to find a new place, a new new place for the airports. Uh, at first, when Kalang Airport was built, the land was the earth was taken from uh, Kaki Bukit. Uh, today is Kaki Bukit area. Lah. Last time, yeah, it was called Kaki Bukit. The, the soil was taken from there to dump into this area called Kalang Basin, which is all very swampy. Right? The soil, the earth was taken from there to build Kalang Airport. Then, after the airport was moved move away to uh, Payaliba, and then there's this amusement park going on. Right? And also, in Singapore, to the two lions that were at the Mereka Bridge was also moved over to the other side to Kang uh, they call it airport road the airport road mm. so the Kalang, old Kalang airport become an entertainment area when it moved over to uh, Paya Leba right. um, why they choose Paya, Paya Leba yeah I told you already because of the short runway and in Paya Leba before it become the airport they had to clear the settlers there they were mostly farmers these farmers were moved to um Bodo area Kosik Lim land Sungai Bodo on the banks of Sungai Bodo right there were lots of these farmers resettled over there and Paliba became an airport all right this is a picture of Paliba airport Right. Of course, the buildings are not very high in Paliba Airport. And then later on, they find that the Paliba Airport was too small and also very noisy. And I was teaching in my Tanyungru school. So every now and then, when the aeroplane fly over our heads, we had to stop our lesson and then wait until the plane to move away and then begin the lesson. Began the lesson. It was uh, every day you have to really had many many bosses for an aeroplane to pass by very noisy because it's quite low uh, and uh, Tanyongru was quite a short distance away from Paraleba airport right and um, later on when they wanted to expand Paraleba airport they find it very uh, difficult to extend because they had to reclaim 
land as well as to pay compensation to those uh, people who are living in that area right so there was very little land very little scope of for, for expansion of Bali by airport and also at that time there was an increasing amount of traffic air traffic in that area and of course Lee Kuan Yew came in right he said that you know, Changi could be a better one so that's why Changi airport was taken over and the Changi are the, the British had already vacated um, Changi the Singapore Air, Fo Air Force took over and so Singapore Air Force was asked to come over to take over Paliba and uh, Changi Airport was developed uh, this is a picture of Changi Airport at its raw at that time when uh, Changi was open there was only one runway okay uh, so this was Changi Airport in the beginning hmm. alright then they find that Changi Airport was chosen because it can expand into the sea alright land the earth could be taken from Tampanese and Loyang and dumped into the Changi Airport I mean into, into the sea to develop into Changi Airport into the runways to develop the runways and they turn around to find some problems down there the mud dredge out the earth sorry the sand that dredge out from the sea was too sandy too loose cannot gel together and the sand quarry at Tampanis came in handy it was because the silt was too gooey All right and so the engineers make use of the silt from the sand quarry All right brought over to mix with the sand from the sea so that they could gel together See, so you see the the engineers killed two birds with one stone. One to make use of silk from the sand quarry in Tampanis and then mix up with the sand, sea sand in their area. Mm. Alright, so that is the story of Changi Airport and then now of course field they are going to build the fifth runway already. Alright. Um, Um, Chang, uh, wait, uh, ten, ten later, I think we are runway, uh, we are on, uh, uh, we are runway, uh, Changi Airport, okay, finish already, let's talk about, um, healthcare, ah, in the 50s and 60s, uh, um, they were discovered that people in this area were very prone very prone to tuberculosis I don't know why he just discovered that people in Changi area was very prone to tuberculosis there were so many cases of tuberculosis right and this man Utamdram he was a land owner he was a very rich man land owner he donated a piece of land in Chai Chi right to make a clinic called Sata Clinic Singapore Anti Tuberculosis Association Clinic and to, to build a clinic and the clinic was named after him it's called uh, Sata Utamdam Clinic and in that area during the time when it was a clinic it sent teams of medical health doctors uh, medical health team right in lorries I'm sorry in lorries in vans to go to the villages right to Ex to uh, encourage people in the village to x-ray right to, to see signs of detect whether sign of tuberculosis or not if there was the patient the patients were asked to go to Tan Tok Sing hospital for treatment uh, so in every village in Changi there was this the Sata van went into there and encouraged people to go for x-ray and yeah talk, talking about before that the sick people i mean or uh, this area changi i mean all almost all rural areas are uh, they seldom go to doctors uh. they visit chinese physician or self-cure 
Yeah, it goes. Yeah, it is herbs. They get herbs from the garden. I right, pound it and then uh, we we'll drink it. Either drink it up or just apply it onto the wounds or whatever. Right, self cure. Then if that cannot cure, they went to the Chinese physician. So in every village, there were surely some quack doctors there. Uh, people go to him and then you will do make some co funny concoction and then let them have it. You know, that is in those days healthcare. Ah, uh, then if everything that they did could not be cured, then they went to the Western doctors. Uh, Western doctors were very few to come by. Uh, in big areas, big in big towns, not say towns, uh, in areas like Siglap, then you can find the nearest doctor around there, you know, and which charge quite a high price, uh, high, high, high fee, right? So Western doctors are quite expensive. And Alright, these are the healthcare in that area. Man, they, later on when the PAP government took over, wow, they built polyclinics. There are so many polyclinics. Uh, it's child care and uh, so health clinics went up in Sumampa Road, they're in uh, Chai Chi, in uh, Changi. There are these clinics. Uh, people went there for treatment. But free, you know, at that time when this clean those up they offer free treatment but one trouble is that they misuse the clinics for no rhyme or reason just visit there and then get MC you know they went there for MC and throw away the medicine All right free <coughs> well then later on the government had to impose a fee if you want to come to a clinic, you pay 50 cents. Ah, 50 cents. Of, of course, they, they come to money, they think twice a bit. Ah. So those, those were the days. Ah. Well, I live in this area. I know I know oh, a lot of stories about them. <laughs> okay. So, um, next. Attainments. Ah, they, they mean mainly. Uh, the, those days there were the radios, of course there were radios, no television, in the 50s, 60s there were no TV, there were only radios, and the main thing that entertained people was those wayangs, the wayang stage by the Chinese temples, in almost every village there was a Chinese temple, and this temple the, every year on the gods or goddess of birthday, then they were staged Chinese wayang. Uh, so the whole village of flock to the wayang shoes, you know, before they start to read, people start to choke using um, straw nets or using a um, gunny sack to go and choke the place. And then when the wayang start, they step down and watch. Right? Every day, two shows in the afternoon, one and uh, evening, one. So every year, the, the Chinese temple, the invite of course these are paid by the donations uh, these are uh, wayang people to uh, stage the show there mm. but of course these are also good moral teaching for the populace also lah, about heroism about uh, being thrifty and all, all the stories are really good stories uh. mm. but it's long-winded uh, you know for 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 Four hours uh, trying to tell you about heroism. Four hours trying to tell you about thrift. It's quite boring. Uh. But then there are people who went there for the food. There will be lots of people selling food. Street hawkers flock around the area. And also there are tikam tikam. Uh, people around go there to play uh, some uh, games of chance. You know. And when they gamble or anything like that, the police would come in, you know. Uh, and also there was this um, other entertainment also lah. Like, you also invite some snake charmers, so, charmers to earn some money also. Alright. <laughs> okay, those during the wayang time uh, they're really exciting. Uh, and also, yeah, certain times when they are these uh, police officers will go in to catch any of these troublemakers like the gangsters or anything like that 
uh, they go and go in and then they went in and nap these people with uh, uh, tattoos on their bodies and so on. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, this is uh, Chinese Wayang. Of course, uh, beside the Chinese Wayang, there was also this open air cinema whereby an area will be cordoned up with fen or fence up and put a few seats in front of a big uh, white um, stage no, no, you know um, in the open air and then there is also a high place to put a projector right and start your shows so one show maybe you pay 30 cents tickets are issued on rainy days show cannot be uh, stage so they have to uh, use the ticket for the next show uh, these are called um, open air cinema uh, there are so many also open air cinemas in this area one is Siglap and Tomapa, Chai Chi uh, in Changi all right so every day there are these cinema shows going on and to in order to inform people of the shows in the later in the evening they would have these posters pasted onto coconut trees or pasted onto uh, uh, provision shops and on the post in the provision shops and um, this runner will then give free tickets to these provision shop owners to you know help to look after the poster right uh, so that there is no vandalism there so free tickets are given to those shops that allow them to paste their posters that's interesting right uh. so later on of course when the new cinema come up like the ocean cinema came up then this open air cinema slowly died away died away okay um Ah, entertainment. Uh, besides, besides this, there are, there are also medicine sellers uh, in the markets. The this medicine sell before they sell the medicine, they would knock a gong and then they would show practice some kung fu and some some skills, right? For to attract the crowd. Then and of course, after their shows, then they will go around. And start uh, asking people to buy this medicine. All right. Mm. And of course, in the villages, in families, there are parents who know how to uh, read stories. They will go around the town to go and rent story books and then read them to the families. These are some that in entertainments. All right. And. Uh, immigration control, I'm sure you have ever been to Changi Point whereby if you want to go take a ferry from Changi Point uh, to Johor uh, to Pasi to, uh, no, Pasi Gudang uh, Pasi Gudang, yes, Pasi Gudang and you go to this checkpoint there, have your uh, passport stamps and so on, then you can get into a, 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 into a boat to take you to Pasi Gudang All right. This was this was taken by me. At that time, I was taken. The policeman down there would take my IC number. And say, why do you take this photograph? And I said, I'm a photographer and, and, and recording events. Then they give me your IC. Uh, and then they, they took my IC down. He said, anything happen, I shoot. I'll run after you. He said, okay, like anytime. <laughs> All right. Uh. Um. And then this is the today's uh, immigration immigration control is. Near, near there, the old one was demolished already. Mm. Yeah, open air markets everywhere. In uh, from Tampines right until Bedok, there were open air markets in Chai Chi, in Bedok, in Sumapa, in Changi, Ten Mile Stones, and so on. All right, there, there are simply people who came and then bring their wares, their vegetables, their meat, their fish, whatever I uh, to sell in on to uh, to sell. They put it on the floor, alright, to sell. And people walk around and choose whatever they like. Right? And of course the, there was no rent. Anybody can just walk in with their wares and start selling. Right? 
Hi, these are open air markets. Um, yeah, in the early days, uh, in uh, Kato, eh, no, sorry, in uh, Changi, Budo, Sumapa area, uh, they could get a lot of raw materials, you know, like for example, the attack. The attack was made from attack leaves. These attack leaves are actually nipa palm. I right. they harvested the palm and then chop off the leaflets and made into attacks. Ah, and then they use the attacks to build whatever like houses or pig pens, chicken coop. Uh, there is attack leaves, and there are these people who also went to the uh, Nipa uh, swamp to harvest atapchi, you know, the seed, the, the fruit of the Nipa palm, which inside contains these uh, seeds which could be eaten, and then this is usually put into. Um, they call it uh, what? Into you usually eat this together with the ice balls, and today you eat it with the uh, uh, the, the the ice shavings, you know, uh, and with the red beans. They call it what? I forgot the name already. Uh, okay. Um, then of chendo, course, chendo. yeah, yeah, chen, chendo also have uh, what do you call that? The plates of uh, ice shavings with the uh, uh, ice kacang, uh, red beans and all that. Ice, ice kacang, ice kacang. Ah yes, ice kacang. Yes, atapchi uh, they call it. Huh? Uh, mm. So they went to Nipa uh, swamp to harvest all this, all right, together. Uh, of course, inside there to go and uh, compete with the monkeys inside there. Lah. There are lots of Nipah swam around uh, Budo and Mochangi area. At that time, when Budo river was still a river, not a canal. Uh, there are lots of these Nipah palms around and there are also lots of monkeys around also. Alright. Mm. Uh, then, coconut trees. Of course, coconut trees are planted to harvest coconuts by the plantation owners and also they also provide a lot of materials for the landowners. The coconut trunks are used as firewood and they're used for bridges and coconut used to, to make coconut into coconut oil. Alright. And uh, the leaves are used for fire starter and so on. Right. And also there's one thing that is seashells. I don't know how come there are lots of these seashells around in Budo Beach, you know. And they collected the seashells heat it up uh, heat it up until the it's not burnt until it heat it up until they they broke not into pieces until they broke up and farmers would like to buy these heated up seashells to the farms there sprinkle water onto the heated up seashells and this seashell will then turn into powder, lime powder. Right. And farmers use this lime powder to uh, neutralize the acidic soil in their farms. Right. So, and some of the lime could also be used for making whitewash in a house. For you, you want to paint your house and you know, paint your chicken coop or you want to paint your pigsty so you use this lime to splash on the weed well it you know it's white in color it's and they use this lime also you know i know some of these people they i don't know how come they splash if you want to eat some of these uh um red uh uh Tobacco and they, they put a bit of lime on there and then start chewing them. I, I don't know whether you raise, you raise. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, this is lime. Um, yours, you was harvested in 
great amount uh, during those days. Uh, I cycled my father to go and buy this this lime uh, to, to put onto my uh, vegetable plots um, along Sumapa Road. Um. And also wherever there are hilly areas and muddy areas, uh, there are also brick making factory. Uh. They get, get hold of this um, earth uh, from the hillside and then bake them into bricks. Right, some areas are Changi, uh, Chai Chi also have a, a brick works. Uh, Tampines also have an area for making bricks. Uh, Jurong, uh, of course, I won't talk about Jurong. Of course, Jurong, there are lots of brick works around. Uh, so these are some of the raw materials. And then some area where there is a lot of larang grass growing. And then it happens that the uh, distiller, a wine distiller, wanted to have cushions uh, for their wine bottles. So they would approach the villagers to make uh, wine cushions. Then these villagers will go around collecting lalang grass and then weave them into something, uh, something like a, a basket or cushion to uh, cushion the wine bottles from breaking. So there are lots of things around there, raw materials that people can harvest off the land, you know, they... Mm. Alright, then schools, oh, in the early days, in almost major villages, there was this Chinese schools, made of attaps, um, you know, and then they employ a few teachers and then start, the, the, the villagers uh, send the children to these schools to study. So when uh, school was in operation and uh, in session, uh, pigs and chicken wander around into the classroom and the children just shoot it away. <laughs> Those are the days. Right. Uh, uh, some of the most uh, well-known school in those days are the Red Swatika. Today, Red Swatika is a very well-known school in Tampanese. All right. And then Pingi School is no more already, I think it has already been amalgamated, Pingi School, right? This is me, I was teaching in Pingi School once. Uh, and also there are other schools, like Minchong, Sin Min School in East Coast, Bingkang School in uh, uh, Pulau Ubin, alright? And then <coughs> the government also builds schools. They are English schools. So these English schools are Bodo Boys and Girls School, uh, Telopaku, there is one uh, Tel Telopaku School, and there, there was one Ai Gemuro School, is a uh, Malay school, uh, Ai Gemuro School is a Malay school. Uh, Pelatokong also there is one school. There, I think that school, I don't know whether it's demolished or not. At that time when they visited Pelatokong, the school was still there. Uh, those uh, army boys will know whether the, the Pulau Tekung school is still there or not, I don't know. Right. And um, of course, the RA, the very famous uh, school is the Lekrau Primary School, uh, but then Lekrau is not part of Changi, I don't talk about it. Where Lee Kuan Yew used to study when he was a kid in Lekrau. Huh? Mm. Of course, other, other schools uh, is not in my area, so I really cannot talk about it. I mm. study in Lekrau School. Ah, Lee Kuan Yew. I, I studied oh, there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So you see, those schools uh, actually, that's why the Chinese, uh, uh, in those days, they, are, they, they send their children to, very few sent to English school, uh, but then those who uh, went to English school, well, they, they really quite benefited a lot uh, by being uh, sent to English school. Alright, so Ah, schools. Uh, now we talk about farming. It's famous already. Fishing because along the coast, if you before land reclamation, if you were to go around east coast, wow, we can see whole rows and rows of kelongs. You know, ah, these kelongs are fish trap. So rows of it. And early in the morning, you can see a lot of activities, the boats going around collecting fishes from the kelongs and then brought them to the shore to sell. 
or brought them to the center to sell to the wholesalers and the wholesaler will buy from these um, uh, folks, fishing folks and then sell it to the market uh, so those days fishers came from this area and uh, from the sea coast and um, every morning or evening you, when you walk along east coast uh, beside the, the Kelong the Kelongs, there are also people who fish along the beach they use their own nets open cast nets they use their long long fish traps uh, to go and fat, trap the fish and then uh, along the coast there will be people waiting to buy their catch so these are fishing and a very few of course few fishing farm at that time uh. and farming uh, there are lots of farms you know uh, at that time when they were building uh, Paya Lebar airport the farmers were moved from Paya Lebar to go to the banks of Bodo River uh, called Kosek Lim land you know and had their build their farms there and in 1955 there was a big heavy downpour for days and days it rains and the whole area was flooded all right and the people had to move out of their houses all right to to stay in the schools in flood uh victim area you know in Bodo boys school is one of them so school had to close when i was a boy i used to during that time visited the school say wow we find our classrooms of uh, in one classroom we have few families stay there all right the, being fenced up by only their sarums and long uh, tablecloth all right uh, and of course people donate clothing donate food to them all right so during those days uh, living along Bodo river uh, is very prone to flooding and later on the government widens the Bodo river uh, every day we saw a, dredge, a dredge, dredging the the wider the uh, the river wider to become a canal that's why it is called Bodo canal today those days it was a small little river where it's very prone to flood all right i lived through all this area mm. all right and farming was at that time was very lucrative in singapore i think it constituted about 30 percent of gdp based on farms chicken farm pig farm vegetable farms and uh, different type of farm all contributed quite a lot during those areas and uh, government pay great attention to farming in those areas the primary production department was formed to help these farmers right to maximize whatever they planted whatever pigs the red and chicken you know i know of these product, primary production people they went around uh, advising people what to do the fertilizer to use the pesticide to use you know what type of pesticide is good for them and and then also watering methods pipes uh, sprinklers were introduced to them you know to maximize their production of vegetables and they also went around to the ki chicken farms right to teach them a vaccination to vaccinate against chicken diseases uh, i also went you know uh went to my friend's house who have uh, a lot of chicken there and then help them also to to vaccinate or inject right this vaccine into the chickens mm. and yeah to control whatever disease they have and pigs yeah they went to the pig farms uh to uh, advise them yeah on the pig's feed the best pig feed all right for the focus uh, so that they can get the best meat and also to get the best breed of pigs for the pokers one was recommended from australia the berkshire boars uh, the the semen from the berkshire boars from australia all right was introduced to them to inseminate the the the, the sows uh, to produce good uh, focus so this primary production department really 
did a great job. So in whatever these those days, government men was called Ching Hulang, and people are very fearful of government people, the police, the customs, and the the yeah, they were very fearful because these are all exploiters. But they welcomed this primary production people called also called Cheng Hu Lang. You know those days are uh, they call the police Tua Kao or police inspector big dogs because they always go around bullying people. And then they call these um uh, land district officer Tui Gu because wherever they went they they look out for money only. And then the police will drove the vans to a side road, you know, and waited down there for any offenders on, on the vehicle to come and to check and say, oh, you are a billion rider without a license. Sorry, I have to find you. And then they would take some bribe from these villagers. All right, you say, okay, la, please excuse me, la, give five dollars, okay? Uh, then you see, they took the money and went away. So you see, people, those are very afraid of such people. But then they welcome the primary production workers, they really help them a lot. Alright, so this speaks well about those days. Huh? Uh. Alright, um, fishing and farming, yeah, fisheries, there are a few fisheries around. There are also these fisheries in the uh, uh, um, department uh, in Changi Point to help people who commercialize uh, do uh, fish farming. And there are a few around in Changi. Mm. Okay, so this is about fishing and farming. Ah, yes, this is a very interesting topic. I met a gangster chief. I asked him why. He said, oh, for <coughs> survival. Without these people helping us, we cannot survive. So they go around collecting protection money, you know, they, 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 and to prevent their stores from being broken in. Well, they collect a few dollars and then you see, uh, after collecting money, the stores are not broken in. If they don't pay the next day, the store will be broken into. Uh, then they will come around and say, See, uh, I asked you to pay, pay me some money to protect your store, you didn't. Now you see what happened to your stores. Uh, like that. So, protection money. Alright, they were also part of gambling dens and gamble away and lookouts for detectives and police. Uh, and also, they go around. Uh, acting as chapjiki collectors, you know chapjiki those days is a uh, form of gambling, small time gambling lah. Huh? Chapjiki they call it about twelve numbers and you So every day they would open up oh twelve four and and, it's, and actually is a is a cheating game lah. You know they the the operation is like that. They was they will the collect all the things that the people punted and then. Choose the one the, the least number. I uh, for example child four is the least people who bought child four. And then he opens up child four, you know, and then they pay to those who got the numbers correct, the rest they just you know, take away. Uh, there's the there is the Chamjiki lah. I know of one operation. I uh, they describe how they can uh, gain from this Chamjiki. Right, you went around collecting a lot of money, and then find out, source out which is the least two numbers that people uh, planted, huh? Then opens up, you know. That's gambling, and then another one is uh, uh, they call it this uh, tontin. Uh, tontin is actually a saving scheme. If there is no, uh, if there is no. Uh, evil thinking behind it is a very good for saving. Is a is a good for saving money. You see, for example, there were, for example, ten people, right, who wanted to save fifty dollars a month. So this Hui Tao or the 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 Tontin head will go around collecting from the nine members. He is the ten member. He will go around collecting fifty dollars from each member. All right. Then whichever member wants the money, he will bid. He said, okay, this man, I will bid for, instead of $10, I will bid for nine fifty. I will, this head will go around from every member 
to collect 950 and give it to the person who bid it. So this person who bid it got only 950 from each member. All right. Uh, that is how you lose money about course you need the money very badly lah. Uh, so um so this goes on every time and un until all are already collected bidded already then the whole scheme stop and then you start another one new ones but some people would collect the money and then run away ah uh, that is one thing bad all right there are some or even the head will collect all the money and ran away. I know of uh, this old days, one teacher from um, Malaysia. He was the taunting head. Well, he collected a lot of money. Then after that, he had squandered the Malaysia. No more. All right. Uh, so this is taunting. Mm. But he's, he is uh, well and proper, very, very trusted. Trusting is a good uh, way of saving money. Mm. And of course, smuggling. Oh, there are lots of them. Some cigarette, wine. I I know people who just smuggle cigarette into it. Duty unpaid, and then this, you put these big baskets of uh, cigarette is unpaid behind some doors. And those people who want to buy, they know exactly how much to pay for one packet. They just throw the money inside the basket and take away what he wants. All right, ah, uh, and then of course the the the, the police will, will come, uh, inquire. If they don't inquire, they they know where the money and the basket is. You just take away the money and the and the cigarette, uh. Of course, he would employ uh, some of the lookouts already before the police get come. They give they will warn him and say, "Hey, police coming!" And then he will just move the basket of unpaid duty unpaid cigarettes away. All right. Uh, this smuggling um, or doing duty unpaid uh, service and wine in those days also quite tax high quite expensive so they will go to the the, the some uh, bushes to set up the distillation process All right uh, they distill in the bush and then sell it and supply it to people who wanted this wine uh, rice wine especially yeah uh, every month you are supplied and these custom people will come uh, if there is no lookout the custom people will take away their whatever machine whatever things equipment all right but the next moment when the the smart the, the the custom people took away their equipment he will go to another site to set up another uh, place to do his uh, wine making process again so it's non-stop all right uh, of course sometimes it's tipped away by by his uh, on look as uh, this yeah tipped away by his men uh, then of course the, the his equipment is safe and sound uh. usually you employ people to look out for detectives mm. and yes uh lending my money lending is a big uh, problem is a big business there you know some these of uh, uh, innocent looking uh, provision shop owners they look very innocent very well very kind actually they are big money lenders that he lends his money at high um, interest and of course he has his khaki around and usually he could be a gangster chief we also don't know but he's a very um, uh, sneaky sort of thing on the surface he's very nice you talk to him everything he knows very well but then on the other hand he could be a gangster chief you know he could solve problems if anybody have any problem a gangster's uh, business and wanted him to solve he will talk behind the scene and then everything is soft right and he could be also yeah um uh, kampong chiefs anything when it's solve problems you go to him I, he will help you to solve uh, so in almost every village are uh, these heads uh, of course I don't see say that all these heads are bad but you know this sort of thing very hard to say uh. <laughs> all right and gangsters yeah I told him I thought I already I mean I already said about the gangsterism uh, I, I asked him why he, he says it's for uh, survival 
and uh, he knows in every village he knows the head he know what gang he come from uh, 2408 or 369 whatever uh, he rattle off and uh, all right so and before they could join him he has to you know make a pledge uh, this he will recruit members and the recruit members who want to be a member of a gang uh, they will go together say a pledge and then squeeze uh, some blood into a bowl and then each take a drink they become blood brothers all right all right blood brothers and then whoever betrays will die all right so that's why gangsters very, once they are get into the gang it's very hard to get away because of the swearing in ceremony they had and the 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 the, the, the bro brotherhood they had so whenever there is one person who get into trouble the whole gang must join in to protect him regardless of whether he is in the right or in the wrong the gang will run after the offenders all right so is it, it is the work of the gangsters and i've ever given the right to a member you know and then he say hey you are um they call me on give me a ride to such an area wow i took him on a motorbike you know what happened when he alighted from a motorbike whew, there was a parang strapped to him behind his back <laughs> just imagine that <laughs> okay so this is about and gangsterism was soft not say they went soft and uh, before they were soft the government recruited the gangster chief would to be their detectives uh, so that's why i know of a friend's father he had tattoos all over his body all right he is a detective all right he goes around uh, catching gangsters he was formerly a gangster chief before all right he turned coats of course he gang members cannot run after him because he betrayed a gang because he's the chief he cannot betray i i mean he cannot be uh you know so he, whenever he walks around all the gangsters would look at him and say eh, better get away from him because he's now the detective uh, police uh, detective you see so the government makes use of this gangster chief to catch gangsters and also another thing is the section 55 they are very afraid of the government have this law under section 55 which catch people without trial all right when the suspect is caught they are jailed without trial so these gangs are very afraid of so they slowly uh, disbanded and that's why gangster in singapore is not a big problem now because of the strict government laws right uh. um yeah these are were the things that happened in the villages um i think i have covered almost all already uh it's already 9 20 so another 10 minutes maybe these 10 minutes you can spend uh answering your questions or yeah, anybody want to uh, have any inputs about my talk <laughs> yeah Uh -huh. Roy, any input, huh? Roy. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Yu. Uh, <laughs> any question to ask? Members, any question for Mr. Yu? Mr. Yu, uh, yeah. I want to ask, uh, besides East, East area, you know anything about the West, the North, or not? like some Bawang area, Jurong area, Tuatukang area? They also have their own. Oh, of course, they also have their own. Ah. I, I'm not very familiar with, but I also heard about this area. I'm, I'm not very familiar, but I heard. Oh. During those early days, uh, you want to travel from Kampung to Kampung. You must find out first whether that area, what gang they belong to. If you are from the different gang, you go in, you're in for trouble. Uh, before you enter the village, uh, you must be prepared 
to run, even right or wrong. If you go in and have an accident, whether you are in the right or in the wrong, be prepared to run to the police station. Right, that is the during those days, ah, right. Yeah. So One I question, know, uh, I I realized in the east coast that uh, they got no pig farmer. Oh no, pigs was um a Malay area, so usually concentrate in Chinese area, and also, yeah. Fields, um, the in the Malay area they are hardly they contribute hardly any fields. In Chinese area, the people, uh, who who yeah, their leftovers are more, and then they collect from this area and then pick feed to the pigs. So this, in the early days, pig farmers they rely a lot, quite a lot on the fields. It's so, so much so they become a racket, you know that. If you uh, want to collect fuel from this area, you must pay protection money, and you know, then you can come and collect. You know, you don't collect. <laughs> you know, this is a oh, oh, one. One more question. I know in the east, the uh, Chai Chi, the Q Drive is the only cemetery there, right? Ah yes, Q Drive is a uh, uh, cemetery. Is a uh, Chinese cemetery, and also. Uh, those during the Japanese time, many of these were gunned down. I mean, uh, Mexico site for the Japanese. Q Q site. A Q driver. Q Q estate. Last time it was a Chinese cemetery called Pang Suan Kia, and Q uh. was taken from this name, not the Q Garden of England, but it is a Chinese name surname, uh, Chiu or Ku. In Hokkien is Ku, in uh, Mandarin is Chiu, so that's oh. why they 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 sinicize it to Q. So that's why he called Q Garden. Okay, okay. And he his he was a uh, the Mister Q, the old Mister Q was a uh, uh, grave digger. Oh, right? he was a grave digger, and then. So I just want to know in the whole of East Coast, uh, only Q area is the cemetery, right? The red Chinese yes, cemetery. No, no, not necessary. Not necessary. There are also eight milestones, the Changi Poiko, eight milestones, oh, also okay. Hokkien Cemetery. The Q Garden is Teochew Cemetery. Okay. And uh, Changi eight milestone is Hokkien Cemetery. There's Wait, one uh, there's one at Sapa Ika. Ah, Sapa Ika also another one cemetery. Yes. Where is Eight Milestone today? Ah, uh? uh, uh, today just... Sapa Ika Jalan Tiga Ratus. Yeah, the uh, oh. uh, upper Changi Road North. Uh, sorry, upper Changi Road East. Hmm. Ah, uh, Jalan Tiga Ratus opposite the Expo there. I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. okay. Then what Expo. about what about this Ivy Singh who owns the uh, Harvey Avenue, the father? Ah. Uh. I uh, Harvey Avenue, right? Uh, Ivy Singh father used to own a big, big piece of land there, where mm. where the oh, army government take over, and then become PIE already, what? No, uh, Harvey, still there. Harvey Avenue. Harvey Avenue is still there. Ah, uh, very short, lah. The Jalan Subi, lah. Uh, Jalan Subi. Ah, uh, Jalan. Jalan Subi. That's why it's called. Subi, yes, yeah, very. The the. That's why it's called. Uh, Sime is called Sime. Yeah, Sime is called. Long long ago, it called Subi. Oh, Subi, Subi, Jalan Subi. Hokkien ah. name ah, Hokkien. Ah, this was called Subi. I don't know Subi lah. Subi. Hokkien Subi lah. Means four beauty. Ah, huh? in Hokkien it means four beauty. Four beauty. Hmm. Four beauty. That's why today it's called Sime. Ah, ah yeah, that time. Subi is hockey. Originally, is Jan Subi a small, small road. Yeah. Yes, very short. It's a very short, very short road. Later, government because of the of uh the what they call no the 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 bilingualism, they change our Chinese Chinese name okay uh dialect name to yeah man Mandarinize it. Just like uh, Nisu do the same thing. Yeah. Soon, same thing. Uh, pin in nice them. Uh. Uh, I used to pin in, yes. Uh, pin in nice. So, uh, then, let me tell you about this so pin in nice thing. Uh. Subi, Subi. Uh, okay, let me tell you about this Subi thing, okay? This uh, uh, four beauties or 
四四名。哎 ，long ago when 四名 first is this first started。There were roads named after the four beauties of China, right? The Gui Fei, right? Then uh, some of the Si Shi and uh, other beauties, the uh, four beauties, ah.、Uh. And then the, those non-Chinese, they do not know how to pronounce because very hard to pronounce. That's why the government named them, right? Ah,、uh, Simei Street One, Simei Street Two, Street Three. Ah,、uh, today the photographs. The pictures of these four beauties, they are still painted on. They are still on the wall. So if you want, you go to my blog to to know about it. You go to my blog, and then you can read about them. What's your blog name? Ah, Yo Hong Ying dot blogspot dot com. Hi,、right, my blog. Ah,、uh, Yo Hong Ying, blogspot dot sorry dot blogspot dot com. And I have the pictures of all the four beauties of Sumi. And Ko Sek Lim Road、yeah. is now Silin, because Sek Lim in Pinin is Silin. So, uh, Mister Yo, can you remember in Changi Point where some of the houses got no door, no door one? Ah,、uh, Changi Point. Changi Point, you know,、uh, at the end of Changi Point today is Changi Meridian Hotel. There, the row of houses got no door one. <laughs> you heard about it? Ah, <laughs>、uh, that I really don't know. My father, my father friend, my father friend own a shop there. They got no door one. Ah, <laughs> have you heard about it? No. Oh, okay, okay. I really don't know why no door. Yeah, yeah. That's the only only place in Singapore where the shop there. A row of shop or no door one. Nobody <laughs> allowed. Ah,、uh, nobody is there to go and rob. Ah,、uh, under the British、uh, rule. Ah,、oh, it's so strict、uh, that nobody dares. <laughs> yeah, yeah.、Mm -hmm. There is Changi Meridian. Exactly the row of shop there. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so Changi shops usually serve the Royal Air Force, ah,、uh, the British. Before Changi Point is called Franklin Point, right? You know, right? Ah,、uh、ha. -huh. Before Changi Point is before Changi Point is called is called Franklin Point. Ah,、uh, Franklin Point. Yeah. Yeah, the old old name lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you you know about the when they were reclaiming Marine Parade, right? You know that the camp in Bodo there. Ah,、uh, camp yes.、Hawker. Yeah,、you、I was there. The land the land was sinking, right? Remember? Yes. So, in order to prove that the land is fit for 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 staying, that's why they build the camp to prove. Oh, okay, okay. But of course, after many years, the sand sink, the land sink a little bit. I know I was there. There was、uh, some problem with land sinking.、Uh, I was a in instructor there. Oh. Ah.、Uh. How they solve the problem? You know any idea? No, I I think they top up the soil. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they top up. So in order to prove that the land is fit for, for this thing, when the land was reclaimed, at first it was fresh. They had to let it sink for a few years, and then there was one big company. You remember, called Interworld. You remember this. This rich man, he ordered、uh, those equipment, those broken equipment from Vietnam, the American broken ships and broken、uh, whatever equipment, the、uh, World War equipment from Vietnam, or、right, over there for refitting, right? And、um, retro, ah,、uh, yeah, refitting, turn them into useful、uh, vehicles for sale. And then、oh. those that are beyond recovery sold as scrap iron, and the、oh. it was a very big area, you know. That's why he built the Bido jetty for ships to bring in these war materials from、uh, oh. Vietnam uh, to、okay. that place uh, to re to 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 
recycle or to whatever to repair yeah. or to refit okay. uh, into useful vehicles mm. or, or into scrap materials. Uh, it's called Interworld. So, so but remember uh, the, the, uh, yeah. the big company. So, Mr. Yeo, have you heard of a story in Bedok Jetty? Somebody saw a mermaid there. Mermaid? Ah? <laughs> no. Oh, you heard about Bedok Jetty? Yeah. Yeah, there are lots of stories around. There's to frighten people. I mean, <laughs> during those days, I know there's those days there are lots of stories to frighten people so that they can do their night business like smuggling and all that. They will say, "Oh, at night don't come out here. Huh? There's a tiger flying around." Huh? So <laughs> everybody was so scared, and then they will do their business. Okay, okay. Yeah, their smuggling business, ah. Huh? Mm. So there are many stories, uh, Pontiana stories, there are about people going in for pregnant women, you know, uh, to take their babies and then to build the the uh, the, the, the 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 bridge, the bridge, the bridge or something like that. Yeah, the bridge, uh, the head, they cut the children head to put under ah, the bridge. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, the Pengdemi Road there. Uh, so it was, these are rumors going on. Uh, okay, so everybody okay. will stay at home and they not come out. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. So these are the things. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Uh, thank you very much. I, I really like to tell all these stories. Yeah, yeah because, I, because I'm from Chua Chu Kang, you see? My ah. kampong is in Chua Chu Kang. So I got a little bit. Some of the story is slightly different and more or less quite similar, you see. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, because my side there got a lot of cemetery, lah. Oh. Bulim cemetery, got man-made cemetery. Yeah, Bulim, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, because the owner of the Bulim own Safti, you know, they uh. sold the whole whole Safti. They bought the whole Pengkang Hill to uh. sold it to to, to uh, SAF. Uh. Uh, I, I know very... uh, one Chinese position doing very well in Bulim. Right, wow, in the Sundays, uh, there was little long lines of people queuing up to see oh. this Chinese position. You remember? No, no, I, I don't area. remember. <laughs> we also went. <laughs> oh. Well, at one time I was uh, at the Changi camping site. Yeah. Is, actually, the, the land uh, I think belongs to David Marshall. Oh yes, David Marshall. Usually, because I uh, weekend, uh, I mean, uh, school holidays, we have pitched our tents there and, and camp. Uh -huh. For sometimes for one more, one whole week, you know, mm. no one can disturb us. We just never ask for permission. We just uh. there and camp, that's all. Mm. <laughs> yeah, David Marshall. Yes, yeah. I, I remember something. My two photographs. There is the place, uh, David Marshall, along mm. uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, nickel drive ah nickel drive yes yeah that that's that's we we also believe we also hear that it's, it belongs to david marshall maybe hong Wing is the same place uh, yeah yeah <laughs> i think it's the same place you got you got, got water everything provided no i mean yeah, there, 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 like, there is a spring water ah uh, yes correct uh, correct so that's right we must have gone to the same place ah uh. yeah 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 yeah, yeah there uh, uh, several spring water people. forever then the uh, houses there, yes. David Marshall and then uh, Wing Long, they are also uh, Chen Sulan. Chen Sulan also have got houses there. Uh, these rich people. And then turning into a child, a uh, handicapped child, some sort of a resort for, I mean, as, as a, as a for, for handicapped people also, yeah. He, he, he turned uh, his he resort into a house for handicapped, Chen Sulan. They call it Chen Sulan Home. <laughs> mm. Mr. Yo, thank, so thanks, for sharing, huh? yeah. thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Uh -huh.